Welcome back to another beautiful sunny day in Central Florida. As you see, I'm in my uh, somewhat usual location. Usually I'm over here, but as you can see, the uh, area is currently occupied by this beautiful F-350 over here with this long ass trailer. But anyway, public road, so I'm over here. <laughs> so today I bring you something that's very, very personal to me, only because there was a time in my life where I really, really wanted this car and I just could not afford it. So that's why I kind of continued on with the uh, with the Acura Award for a while. And then I got into the Kia. And then here we are now with this beautiful 2014 Infiniti Q50 Premium. This is like the mid model. There's a base, which is called a Q50A. Then there's the Premium, which is what this is right here. And then the Sport, which is obviously the one that has the the different front bumper, the 19 inch wheels, the Brembo brakes, the lowered suspension, uh, different rear bumper, different interior, things of that nature. But honestly, if you really just want the performance at a lesser cost, you could get the, 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 the premium just like this one. The reason I say that is because that, unlike the, the, the Kia Stinger that I own, across the board for the 2014 and 2015 model, you have the same exact engine and um, the horsepower output was exactly the same. So there's really no differences there unless you wanted aesthetics such as the, the 19 inch wheels, the different interior, the suspension and all that, which the Q50 Sport offers, which was the top of the line for the 2014, 2015 model. Second reason why this car is so personal to me is because this is my girlfriend's car. And it's, it's a big deal to me because I wasn't able to buy this car the time I wanted it, which like I said, I was about maybe 22, 23 years old at the time. At that time, I was looking at either the Q50, I was looking at a Ford Focus ST, don't ask why a big guy like me wants, wants a Ford Focus ST. I wanted something fun, all right? Um, the Subaru STI, there was a bunch of cars at that time that I wanted, and I don't exactly remember why I didn't get the Q50, other than the fact it was very expensive. I mean, at that time, it was still 20,000, 30,000 plus. Even right now, these cars are still in the five-figure range. I've not seen any of these cars sell in clean condition for anything less than maybe twelve or $13,000, depending on the mileage. But this right here, this is a 2014, first model year for the Q50, but the carryover engine, which I'm gonna get into very, very soon. And honestly, this is still one of my favorite cars. And I, and I like the fact that my girlfriend owns it and I get to drive it whenever I want to, and I still have the luxury of having my Kia Stinger. So I got the best of both worlds now. So I'm completely very, very grateful for this opportunity. So we're gonna start with the basics. Uh, this color code, I am yet to still figure out because when you actually Google 2014, 2015 color codes, this specific color never really shows up because when you actually look for the color that it says, it's a much brighter red. So I've looked this up. The color code is NAH. It comes up as either Force Red or Cayenne Red. I'm not sure which one it really is, but this is not a color that I see very often. But it's a beautiful, beautiful red color, a little bit burgundy-ish. But as you walk around the car, this red burgundy color does set off the lines very, very nicely. You can pretty much see all of the sculpting that was done. 
versus darker colors when they show all this. Usually you really want to see like all the body sculpts, you, you'll, you'll get like a white color or maybe a silver, but this red still sets it off very, very nicely. Coming down past your side, you can see it's kind of like a bit of a wide body effect right here, which I really, really like. Nice chrome trim all around. Like, you know, they did a chrome in just the right, the right places around the window, on the uh, door handles. Just enough, not too much. And the grill, when we got the car, the grill was already customized. You know, they put they got like a gloss black overlay on the front of it. So I, I kind of like that a lot better than the factory chrome that it comes. And to touch it off, this was the first modification that, that she did was these BMW M style mirror caps, which were fairly easy to install. I want to say it took about maybe 20 minutes to do both sides. So you just took a heat gun and just took a little prior tool, just pop off around the edges to take the original one off and then just put those back on and it fits just like it's OEM. Yeah. Now, just a disclaimer, like I said, this is my girlfriend's vehicle, so there's gonna be certain areas of the car will not be showing, such as the trunk, for example, because a lot of personal belongings in there. But we're gonna start right here at the front door. Very, very easy access, as long as you got the key fob on you. I got a whole bunch of keys in me at the moment. It's just a small little touch pad behind the handle. You can just put your hand behind, door's gonna unlock. It's this beautiful black interior. As you see, she did do a, uh, diamond stitch seat cover because the you know as you can see the seats are kind of worn out this is the 2014 you know it's you know this she's a i believe she's the third owner of this vehicle so there's also a lot of wear and tear to this but nothing that can be fixed just a little leather but this definitely was it was, was a nice little touch that she did so i do like this a lot um thing we might want to do the other side just to match but for right now we got the driver's seat done just to give you an idea we may even just do all diamond stitch seats and call it a day and she has my uh well, it looks familiar to you. This is my old neck cushion from the Acura. Anyway, let's get down to business. Let's see what's powering this beautiful machine. So for the 2014 and 2015 model years only, you get the bread and butter VQ 37 VHR 3.7 liter V6 engine. No turbos, no nonsense. Straight all motor, plenty of torque. Very, very high revving engine up to 7,500 RPM redline. And this is by far the greatest and most indestructible, reliable engine Infinity ever made. And it's a very, very sad shame that come 2015, they completely scrapped this, this VQ engine. I went to the VR, which was a three liter twin turbo, which honestly has really shown it's not the most reliable engine. It's not the most practical. They do tend to have a lot of issues. It's kind of sad that Nissan and Infinity went away with this, especially Infinity, because Nissan still have this engine available for the 370Z which sadly came to an end as of early this year because the new Z is out with the same VR three liter twin turbo that's available from 2016 and forward of the Infiniti Q50 and Q60. And yes, we did do some uh, intake modification because the factory intakes did in fact have some uh, cracks in them. So we went ahead and slapped some aftermarket intakes on there. Sounds great. It, 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 it really woke the engine up a little bit as well. You know, everybody's always said that Nissan and Infiniti engines do do have a lot of restrictions with the factory airboxes. So this definitely did open it up a lot. I'm not talking butt dinos, dinos here. I'm telling you this is exactly what it is because it was a nine day difference. I'm not saying you're going to get a whole 50 or 100 horsepower out of it, but you definitely get a noticeable gain just by taking out the stock airboxes. So we're going to fire this bad boy up. Push button ignition, foot on the brake, press the button to start. Very, very quiet. Until of course you rev it up a little bit. So let's get a sock lift, shall we? And by the way, the check engine light is on because we need to replace one of the catalytic converters. No big deal. By far one of the most amazing sounding V6 engines out there, and one of the most um, and one of the highest revving V6s as well. The VQ37 VHR engine in the Q50 is good for 328 horsepower and 269 pound-feet of torque, and it's made it to a seven-speed shiftable automatic 
and it comes in the rear wheel drive or all wheel drive as an option. All right, so we are back behind the wheel and just having a nice, uh, a nice view of the cockpit. Now you see we have two infotainment screens. The top one pretty much just shows audio, fuel economy, eco drive report, and of course the clock, which we're looking at now. So we're gonna go back over to audio, which right now is not gonna show anything because my phone's not connected. Fuel economy, we average about 19 miles per gallon because we tend to sit in the car a lot like I'm doing right now. So, you know, it does not really give us any realistic numbers because it really goes off by how you're driving the car and the idling is a big part of it. So 19.2 is what it's showing, but most of the time I do drive this car in eco mode, which you can see right there. It shows here on the screen as well. So you see, we got five different modes. We have snow, eco, standard, sport, and personal. Personal is obviously where you can go in there and, and adjust certain things based on how you want it. In this case, you can you can change the drivetrain mode to eco or sport or whatever you, know, you want to choose from. And then um, your steering preferences as well. Standard is usually what will be used more often, but I tend to use eco the most because I like to save money. Snow mode, pointless in Florida, but if you ever take this car cross country, which we did, we drove this car to New York and it did amazingly well. Sadly, it wasn't snowing, so we didn't get to really see how good the snow mode was, but it is there if and when you need it and it basically just lowers the throttle response, keeps the car in a higher gear just to prevent the wheels from, you know, just, just, just to prevent you from, from losing traction as, as much as possible. With that, you also get an eco driver port, which kind of just gives you like a score based on, you know, cruising, deceleration, and starting. As you see, we can do a lot more acceleration because let's, let's be honest, this is a very, very fun car to drive. So we don't spend much time driving this car and, uh, you know, efficiently as much, but I, like I said, I usually like to. Once my girl gets behind the wheel, she drives in like she stole it. So <laughs> it is what it is. But other than that, um, it shows your audio as well. Like I said, I don't think connected at the moment. So it's really not going to show much in terms of audio. And if we go back to the main screen again, it's going to give us the clock, which is not the best looking clock in the world, but shows the temperature for both sides. It has a dual zone climate control, which you can see kind of more of right here. You hit this climate button. And then you can have more options there. You can choose the dual modes. You can adjust the the uh, heated seats. You can change whatever temperature you want, want to set to. Auto, it'll work based on how you have the main climate control set at. So if you have it set to maybe 75, 80 degrees or whatnot, then the seat warmers will adjust its level of intensity based on the temperature you have the climate control set to. As for audio options, you have Bluetooth, you have, you have a USB, you have a CD player. Uh, AM, satellite radio, and FM. Usually just use Bluetooth and iPod, which I, like I said, can't really do much audio because it's gonna <laughs> give us all copyright, which we don't want. But this main screen, there's a ton of different options you can scroll through here. Driving performance, calendar, emails. Yeah, if you have, have if you have the car connected to Wi-Fi, then you can go through your emails or whatnot, and be, and you can have, and you can go through them on your phone. I believe I did see an option here as well for. I believe there's a Facebook option here too, if I'm not mistaken. I did see it somewhere on here. Yep, there you go, see? You can even go on Facebook with this thing once you your phone's connected to it. There's various settings you can go in and change. So Bluetooth, phone, and mail, the vehicle settings. Well, let's go to vehicle settings real quick. There's, <laughs> you can choose pretty much any and everything. You can even control the door handle if you want to use the actual touch sensor or just the button that's on the uh, that's on the, the handle itself you can choose whether you want to use that you can turn that off or you can turn it on but yeah there's a bunch of different things here you can scroll through see like touch, sen touch, sen touch sensitive door sensor you can turn that off if you just want to use the button instead of the little touch pad behind the the handle let's go back here and let's look at screen adjust screen settings for both Let's go to meter. So on meter, you can choose. So what is what is showing you here is what you can choose up here. So you can literally pick and choose what you want the the, the tachometer to show you. Now, as you see here in the tachometer, it says chassis control, and that is actually something you can turn on and off here in the infinity mode selector, and it's called active trace control. Now, what active trace control is, is gonna do is when you are taking corners at a higher speed, you're gonna see some animation here as you're steering. And what it's basically doing is applying pressure to the rear brakes in order to keep the car 
in line as you're taking that curve, either left or right. You, you, you know, you'll let you feel the car kind of pulling, you know, to one side, but it's doing it to keep you centered in that lane as you're going around the corner. It's, it's kind of a little bit like having like an extra um, stability control. It's, it's, it's just keeping you in line so you don't lose control as you're taking high-speed corners, which is pretty cool. And this is actually something that's available on pretty much all Nissans now as far as, I, as, far as, I've, as far as I've been seeing in terms of research. Pretty much all the uh, Nissan Infinity vehicles have this now. Now, I do hear a lot of biased opinions about using Actu Trace Control because it, ca it can put extra stress on your rear brakes. But if honestly, if, if, you're, if you're a top-notch driver, if it's something that, that you're gonna be doing a lot, you better just turn it off and you just go balls to the wall and just drive the car as, as confident as you, as you feel like but if you just want a little extra assurance of, of not spinning out active trace active trace control is there for you now in terms of the engine and transmission mode this will go into when you're you know you know when you're when you th this way you would choose in the personal settings so the personal drive mode that i did show you guys earlier that is what controls what mode you want the car to drive in while you're in personal mode but literally, there are so many settings for this car. You can literally change every setting on this vehicle, set up exactly how you want it. Camera settings, voice recognition, the meter. Like I said, you can control everything on, on the on the tachometer from this screen. And there's, there's really just a bunch of stuff you could do in here, and it's very very it's, it's very very driver intuitive. Now let's talk about what you get with the premium package versus the base model, which is the Q50A. So you do get a sunroof, you get the heated seats, you get the bowls. Surround sound system, which sadly I can't demonstrate for you, but it is a very, very beautiful sounding sound system. Um, that's mainly most of what you get in terms of the base model. The base model, pretty much like I said, same engine, same transmission. Um, I believe the base model didn't even have leather seats. I think I think you can get those as an option, but it came standard with leather seats on the premium, and of course the Sport has these has these uh, stitched leather seats front and back. Now I'm gonna step out here and do my typical backseat test. <laughs> now, as you know, I'm six feet tall and 280 pounds, and you can already kind of see already, there's not a ton of space back here, but I'll still do my demonstration as usual. So, yeah, not ideal for someone of my size. I can barely even close the door. Yeah, I'm trying to need a jam right here. Gotta sit back and come at least for a long period of time. There you have it. So unfortunately, my phone decided to overheat because it's like 187 degrees outside. So I had to come back, come inside now to finish recording this part of the uh, the video. But backseat space as you see i am completely cramped my both my knees are against the back of this chair and it is hard plastic so it's not very comfortable my knees right against this so definitely not adequate space back here for for tall adults but there's plenty of space back here for child seats and you do have ac vents back here which you can turn on and off they're not temperature controlled like how they are in the kia unfortunately but still nice a nice feature to have back here Nice big sunroof up there. I mean, even so, what I've noticed about these back seats is that they are slightly elevated, so you kind of do have a nice view of, of what's up front. You see that nice, beautiful, beautiful large screen up there in front of you, and you kind of can just see what the drivers are looking at. So it's so headroom does not a whole lot. I mean, let's see what you guys can see. I'm right against the uh, the headboard here, so <laughs> definitely not for me back here either. And now we have some more guests here you see that Acura TSX over there and you see there's a ball being tossed back and forth there I play the softball so time to go because I don't want this, none of these balls hitting the car I gotta go now this is always a challenge trying to get out of this back seat the way it is <laughs> Lord have mercy um yeah just bear with me three hours later well I guess what it hurts to get some driving impressions now so like I said I usually stick to eco mode for the most part so I was cruising down this little back road, 25, 30 miles an hour. Very, very smooth drive. Uh, transmission is shifting, buttery smooth. Right at 130,000 miles as of right now. We did get the car with 114,000 back in December. So yeah, done about 16,000 miles since uh, time of purchase. I'm just taking up this uh, little road here. And we're gonna switch to, to sport mode here. And once again, guys, I do not condone this. 
recording while driving, but we're gonna give it some. Very, very linear acceleration. Very, very smooth. I barely even feel, feel the car going through gears. It gets up to speed very, very quickly. I think it started off with like maybe second or third gear just now. And revving all the way up to 7,500 RPM. Like there's really not many engines out there like this. And like I said, Infinity made a very, very solid engine for the first two years for the Q50. I have no idea why they decided to switch over to a, a twin turbo V6 setup, but it's, it, it has been proven that this is the more reliable engine. Obviously the newer ones have more technology, but if you want reliability, this is the one to get. 2014, 2015, Q50, or the G37 coupe because the Q50 wasn't even, the Q60 wasn't even available for the, the coupe until I believe 2017, 2018. But they never got the VQ37 for the Q60 body style, sadly. All right, let's see if we can get a little zero to 60 here. say guys don't try this at home this is purely for your entertainment <laughs> educational purposes only all right went back to civilized eco mode now so <laughs> driving along going back home so yeah guys this is this is definitely one of my uh my favorite vehicles i've reviewed so far and like i said mainly because this is very very personal to me because this is something i really really, really wanted many many years ago and i'm just really really happy now that it's in the family it's in the it's in the fleet so <laughs> You know, it's my girlfriend's daily driver. She's absolutely in love with it. It's definitely been her her best car. She's had a couple cars before, but this was, um, she had a Kia Soul, actually, before uh, she got this one. So she traded in the Kia Soul to get this one. Um, she didn't really enjoy the Soul too much, but this is definitely, definitely a winner. This has everything she needs, everything that, that she loves. And here we are back at home. The two red cars parked next to each other. Very, very beautiful view. I'm, I'm loving this right here. And just like that, it's a wrap. Thank you guys for checking out this video of the 2014 Infinity Q50. Like I said, one of my favorite cars I've reviewed so far. Sitting next to this beautiful 07 TL Type S full bolt on. If you guys have not seen videos of that car, make sure you click up above right here and check that car out. And as always, like, share, subscribe. I greatly appreciate everybody's been following along. I'll see you guys next time. And drive safely.